I knew I'd made it when I got into the Whitstable Times. What's the first name you think of in biscuits? Huntley and Farmers, of course. It was just a naughty boy playing with his pen. <laughs> I did this nearly 40 years ago, 1979. But when it was printed, it all came out a lot lighter. I thought the details would be hidden more in the... That is all there on the show. This was the original tin I did for them, Mooka style. A party scene going round and round and there was all sorts of shenanigans going on. There's a dodgy looking geezer with a dodgy looking cigarette. But he's making a bit of a name for himself. I suggested that I put the legs coming out from under the table and they said, oh, you should have done. And that was license for me to behave badly on the next tin. And here's another one in the Japanese style. And there is an artist and he appears to be writing Sex and Drugs and Rock and Roll in Japanese. I got it translated by a friend who was studying at Oriental School. knew about it when a friend of mine came running upstairs one Sunday morning to say, Mick, look at this, page three of the people. It was exposed. Well, something was exposed. When the story came out, it said I was a disgruntled employee of Huntley and Palmer's, but I'd never met them. Totally freelance job, just done for a bit of fun. A devilment, really. We can only presume someone decided to have a joke in rather poor taste, a very stupid and costly prank. I kept a pretty low profile. Didn't know whether I'd be responsible for reimbursing their lost biscuit tins or or what. Hopefully now it makes a lot of people smile, particularly those that got them out of the cupboards and selling them on eBay. Yeah, well, there's, there's me as the uh, gardener holding a watering can. And he's carved his initials in the tree. God, what a naughty boy. <laughs> 